Carnaby Street, London was famous as the centre of fashion during the so-called swinging 60s. It's still full of clothes shops, but times have moved on. Howie's is a new company specialising in outdoor and performance clothing for young people. They're produced only from organic fabrics. Howie's takes its green credentials very seriously indeed. Well, when we built the store, um, there was a focus on uh, using as green a possible um, building materials. So all the walls we skimmed with um, lime rather than plaster. And instead of using sand in the lime, they used uh, crushed recycled glass. Um, all the paints we bought were either water-based or they were a low-impact, uh, low-odor uh, paint. Um, we tried to use either um, materials that were already in the store, um, so all the light fittings we left. Um, if we've used plasterboard or MDF, it was already here in the store. Um, but where we've had to replace it, um, we've used uh, low-impact stuff. And then all of our shop fittings we had made by a local company out of uh, wood that is um, managed uh, within Pembrokeshire. Um, so the, the, the stuff that we've used is oak that's been um, either wind-fallen and collected uh, and used for the building trade, or it's been uh, managed down and replanted. But when it came to the shop's lighting, the team from Howie's was faced with a real dilemma. The existing spotlights were energy intensive, so they began to look at ways of reducing their electricity consumption and with it, their carbon footprint. Unfortunately, in retail, it's all about lighting and glitz and glamour. And unfortunately, um, we have to play the game that everyone else is playing on the high street. Um, so when we came in, we already were you know, left with these light fittings. So we started by contacting a company that supplied us um, lower energy bulbs. So instead of being 50 watts, they were 35 watts. But we're talking to a company um, at the moment that um, we're, we're looking at LED solutions. So instead of using 35 watts in a bulb, we could be using 0.5 of a watt per bulb, which would save us an enormous amount of energy. With a live meter in the shop monitoring their annual power bill and with low energy bulbs, how is next turn their attention to their electricity supplier? The deal that we get with Good Energy is that we pay slightly more, but we know that the power that we're getting is solar, uh, hydro or um, wind based. Um, and also, you know, like our company, they're investing in you know, pushing on the future and pushing on the technology of power generation from those um, technologies. The shift to renewable energy, such as wind power, is in line with the UK government's targets to reduce carbon emissions 60% by the year 2050. Only one energy company in Britain currently promises 100% of its electricity comes from renewables. Called Good Energy, the company is less than 10 years old but already has a customer base of over 200,000. If you look at the way that we interact with our customers, you can see that it's slightly different from a normal utility. So first of all, we've invited our customer base to be, invest in the company. And each time we've done that, we did that in 2002, 2004, they've invested about 10%. And we're just asking again now um, for customers to see whether they want to invest. And we expect up to sort of 10% of our customers consider investing in the company. So that's first, they're investors. Secondly, um, we send out a newsletter with every single bill that the customer gets. And that has a lot of information about what else is going on in climate change and renewable energy. Looking forward, we're looking to introduce a scheme in the new year where um, customers can come to us and we can recommend where they can go and buy their own small wind turbine or solar panel. And over the last six months, we're really excited that. Um, our customer base has really been looking at how they can reduce their energy and they successfully um, reduced energy by 5% in six months which is ahead of government targets and ahead of what the national average is doing. One of Juliet's customers is making so much excess electricity with her home generation scheme she's even selling it back to good energy for profit. Susan Pollard installed solar water heating and photovoltaic or PV panels on the roof of her house and garage a year ago. This figure here is actually telling us what the, what the PVs are producing at this moment. And it's November, it's well into November and it's um, half past two in the afternoon or thereabouts. And so it's producing um, 
600, more than 600 watts. We've actually cut the amount of electricity we take from the grid by 46%, which is enormous, of which only 20% is because of the, um, the PV we're, we're making and using ourselves. So the other 26% is what we've been saving simply by using it more carefully. St. Aldham's Church in North London is also a good energy customer, selling surplus power back to the grid. Each, each panel generates two or three volts. Um, when you multiply it all together, you get a lot of power. We've generated more than we expected to. If I look at the displays up there, overall we've produced over 21,000 kilowatt hours. That should be enough to have powered about seven houses for a whole year. Every time I go into the halls, I I cannot go past the displays without going and taking a peep and looking up at them and seeing how much energy you know, they have been producing today and over the rest of the year. Alex McKellis is an architect. He's built an eco-friendly underground house in London's prestigious Notting Hill area. I've always been interested in, in alternative energy and lived in standard Victorian houses and never really had the opportunity to, to experiment with these uh, energy systems. So when we did, decided to build this house, we said, well, let's, let's put into practice all these things that we keep trying to get our clients to do. On the outside, the house rises just two metres above the ground level. It's excavated to a depth of eight metres over two floors with the surrounding earth providing both sound and thermal insulation. Everything in the house is electric and the water comes from an underground bore drilled to a depth of 120 metres. The house is warmed by a ground source heat exchanger while the basement level pool acts as a heat reservoir keeping the house at an even 25 degrees summer and winter. On the roof there are solar hot water tubes and a 500 watt set of photovoltaic panels the remaining power comes from renewable sources supplied by good energy. The micro-generating capacity of the house's own system meets just 10 to 15 percent of requirements, with peak generation period being the summer. At other times, surplus electricity can be sold back to the company. The home acts as a showcase for Alex's architectural practice, but it's also a practical, low-energy family home. Good Energy is still a very small enterprise compared with the big utilities, but the company has expansion plans for the future which will focus on their unusually close relationship with their customers. The challenges going forward for us to grow in the UK is to make sure that we do have enough 100% renewable supply. And we have a whole team who focus on this um, all the time. And going forward, I think what we're looking at is trying to work in partnership with other organisations and potentially develop more of our own generation asset to secure enough power so that we can deliver to our customers. Meanwhile, back in Carnaby Street, Aid and his team at Howie's say jumping on the renewable energy bandwagon is as much about lifestyle choice as it is about economics. The philosophy of the two companies, clothing outlet and energy utility, are a good match. Our aim is to make great clothing. Our aim is to make amazingly technical and fantastically performing for clothes. The fact that we do it in the eco way, for us, is the logical way. Um, you know, that power you know, should be um, non-polluting. You know. It's enormously exciting. It's been such fun. You, know, I, um, you spend money on things and you get you know, pleasure out of them, uh, more or less. This one's been hugely rewarding. It's just such fun going in there in the morning and seeing it come, come to life and finding out how much it's been making during the day. It, it, it's a real feel-good factor about it. There are plans to build hundreds more wind turbines in Britain's offshore waters to help shift energy production from fossil fuels to renewables. As more and more people turn their homes, businesses, schools and churches into micro power stations, the hope is to tackle global warming from the ground up through people power.